Hello and welcome to Healthy Delights. We're here again in Joyce's Kitchen to continue the series on involving children in cooking. In the first programme, we looked at dips, sauces and healthy option snacks which the children enjoyed. Today we have something a little sweeter for those who love something tasty at the end of their desserts. And these are what we're going to be using, some berries to create wonderful tasting desserts. And then we're going to end with vegetable fondue, which is an interesting way of using vegetables to make them tasty, way to enjoy food. Are you ready today, Lucas and Felix? Yes? Good. Then let's cook. Our first dessert that we are going to prepare today is a typical German dessert. It's made of berries, all different kinds of berries. Yes, so we have our little helpers today, Lucas and Felix, and they're going to be showing us how to make a berry rich dessert. Berries are very important for children because they're small, they're tasty and they're rich in nutrients. So let's begin. We're going to start off with putting some black currant nectar into the pot. So would you like to do that, Felix? <coughs> you have to pour it carefully. Just half. Not the half. Keep going. So, yeah. a little bit more. That's very good. Now you can see how dark that syrup is. It does have sugar in it. But the reason it's so dark is because it contains pigments that are very good for your body. Now, why don't you put the cornstarch in, Felix? That's it. And you're going to mix it in together. That's it. Hold it with your left hand. Pass me then that. That's right. Now, the reason you mix the cornstarch in a separate fluid is so that it doesn't get too sticky and stick to the pot. We want it not to be lumpy, we want it to be smooth. I think, I think he's got it now, hasn't he? Yeah, that's his genug. That's yeah. enough, Felix. Thank you very much. That's nice and smooth. And we're going to wait because we want this to start to boil a little. We have to oh, wait a little bit. Wait. I'll just let him do it. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't understand. Okay, brilliant. So what you need to do now is to take the whisk and mix it. And start to mix it. We're going to pull it forward so that you can whisk it nicely. Can you see how dark the colour is? Whilst Felix is mixing, I'll talk a bit about the benefits of blueberries. Blueberries are beautiful. They're, these are frozen blueberries. Did you pick these blueberries? I picked them all myself. All the berries here are picked by myself. So these were freshly picked berries and they were frozen and you can see they have a nice dark purple colour. Now earlier when I spoke about berries I said they had a special chemical in them that helped to look after the brain. Now um, there are certain conditions that older people can get like dementia or Alzheimer's disease which affects the brain, the thinking and memory and these special blueberries help to make sure the brain is looked after well and it's not just as an adult that you need to look after your brain you need to look after your brain from childhood and that gives you an even better chance of greater health so blueberries are great for children is it beginning to boil auntie yes. joyce yes you see the steam coming up so it's beginning to boil keep just going. keep on stirring you keep stirring keep it. Keep on stirring. Cut by the, by the, you keep stirring yeah. it so that it doesn't go lumpy. Yeah. Now we've also got raspberries, and raspberries are very pretty as well. Do you like raspberries? Would you, Auntie Joyce, would you like to ask Lucas if he likes raspberries? Has to um, himbeer gan. Has to gan himbeer. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he says, I like them. How does he eat his raspberries? We have to do some leaves then with glass or then with or then with, with pudding or then we have to do some leaves then with glass. He says that he loves his berries with ice cream. Now you know the great thing about that is that when you do eat ice cream it makes your blood sugar level go up very quickly. But these berries have antioxidants so they do help to give some protection. 
So it's good if you are eating ice cream to have some berries with it. So we can see that it's getting thicker. Now, what, what berries have we got over there then, Auntie Joyce? These are red currants. Red currants. Now, red currants are really interesting because you can have them with sweet or you can have them with savoury. That's right. You can make a red currant jam that goes with savoury food. Or you can make something sweet, like what we're making today. And the other day I explained them, I explained to everybody that you can use berries to make chutneys, which is really very, very nice. And it's a beautiful colour, it's very appealing. Of course. And it is the colour that offers the protection. If these were, um, if they're sun-ripened berries, then they're going to have more benefits. Berries that are ripened in the sun have more antioxidants than those that are ripened artificially. Mm -hmm. Okay, now oh. it's cooking. So we better slow down the heat. Excellent. Maybe it's time for Lucas now to start adding some of his berries. Well done. Luca, can you do that? Good. Oops, be careful. Okay, okay. I'm going to show you how to add Mahal. berries so Mahal. that you can do it carefully. Ganz langsam. It's very hot in here. So you have it low and you use the spoon like this. Yeah. Do you want to try doing it, Lucas? Because if it splashes, it could burn your fingers. Excellent. And I think now it's time for Lucas, um, Felix to add his. Felix, to crush the berries in the I'm just asking Felix to put the berries in the pot. That's good. Go ahead. Ooh, that looks good. Very colourful. Black and red. Beautiful. Lovely. Yes, and now it's your turn to put the blueberries in. Wow, that looks great. That looks great. beautiful, doesn't it? It's a snitching. Even the children are saying all the different reds and blues look so pretty, huh? Shall we let Lucas just stir them around a little bit? Lucas, can you rush Nice. And we're going to leave them a little bit because they were frozen to cook. Did you notice something, Angela? What although was that? they have been frozen, although yeah. they have been frozen, it looks just as fresh as when I picked them, really. They've the still colours. got all the colour inside, yeah. that's right. Yeah, it's not sort of squashed and things, it's, it's really whole. And there's mm -hmm. a secret to freezing the berries. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to... Uh, the secret? There's a secret to, to freezing the berries. Would you like to share that secret, Auntie Joss? I will. Um, if you have plastic containers, yes. you know, when you pick the berries, just put them straight into the plastic containers the size you want. Yes. Don't touch them anymore. Just leave them in those containers. Shut them yes. and put them in the freezer. Wow. Don't wash them. Just leave them as it is. When you use them, you can yeah. wash them. Okay. If you try to wash them, will it damage the berries? I think it, it not only damages the berries, but it's wet. Then it sticks okay. together. Okay. You know, and these berries are picked by yourself. They have no spray on it because I, I get them from the organic farm. So okay. we don't have to worry about sprays or anything okay. like that. Uh -huh. So as many berries as you can pick all through the summer is wonderful, wonderful vitamins, wonderful things for your brain. And vitamins. And your trees are waiting in there for you for every breakfast. Yeah. Or supper or... Whenever you need Whenever to make something you need lovely. To make some. Actually, my family have uh, a smoothie every day with blueberries and blackberries and red berries. Excellent. Yeah. All right then, Lucas, that's enough. We're going to leave it now and we're going to serve it a little later. We're now going to make fruit sherbet. This is an interesting and exciting way for children to include more fruits into their diet. That way, they get to eat tasty dessert, but also to eat healthy fruit. Okay, we have our little helper with us today who's going to show us how to make fruit sherbet. So why don't you go ahead? Okay, Eliane. She's putting in some bananas. That's good for energy. 
Mm. Healthy. And and everything's frozen, isn't it, Auntie Joyce? That's right. So, everything is frozen. Yeah. And so we're going to pack in as much as we can. And I think that's all. I think Early that's Auntie all. doing a good job. Put one tablespoon of honey. We're going to put a little bit of honey in. That's good. Ellie. Good. She does a real nice clean job, doesn't She's she? She's an excellent little cook. See how excited the children are and they learn so much. The earlier they start, the better cooks they are if they <laughs> grow up to be young ladies, huh? And hopefully the more healthily they'll eat so they can be nice and healthy as adults. That's exactly right. Here we go. You might want to put oh, a tiny yes. bit of apple juice in just to help it along. Just, okay. So that'll do. Thank you, Elian. And now Elian is going to make up the sherbet. There you go. Good. It's all done. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? Okay. Oh, look at that. Wow. Boy, that looks great. There you go. Make a little design like this. Oh, yeah, she wants to make her own design. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, that's nice, Elia. Good, lovely. Now uh, she's going to garnish her way. Look at that. Lovely job she's doing. She's doing a brilliant job. And what herb did you choose, uh, Aunt Joyce? Mint, oh, mint. Mint's always a lovely um, des a herb to add to a dessert. So now our final dessert is Trudy's Mango Dessert. It's made with mangoes, of course, and they're rich in beta-carotin and also something called zeaxanthins. Their plant nutrients are great for your eyes. So eating lots of mangoes is good. Now I'm going to ask Auntie Joyce a little bit about Trudy's Mango Dessert. Auntie Joyce, where did this dessert come from? Well, actually, I went to visit a girlfriend of mine. She lived many, many years in Brazil. And so she thought, well, how can I make something special out of these mangoes? Because we, ha we have so many of them. Mm -hmm. And so she created this dessert. Mm -hmm. But of course, she used a proper cream. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, wow, it's really good. But I would like to keep, take that cream away from mm -hmm. this dessert. So I tried it with cashew cream. And I tell you, it tasted even better. Oh, did it? Oh, I think it's a great opportunity for our little helper to show us how to make it. Okay, So let's why don't go. you begin? First, we're putting some cashew nuts into the blender. Then some nice mango. I think that's Alfonso mango, which is very nice and tasty. We're going to add some lemon juice. And then we're going to add some sugar. You can use honey instead. It calls for exactly the same amount of honey as it does sugar. Some cardamom, the spicy flavour. Saffron will add colour. Oh, nice. And some water. Let's try with half. Yes. Because we want it to be creamy, don't we? That's right. You have to go after, you know, for, you have to always watch and do it very slowly because uh, to get the right consistency. Okay. So yeah. let's close it. Well done. Elian, you can turn it on. Now, 
open it and have a look, Elia. Ooh. It looks very creamy. Wow. Mmm. Looks good, huh? Let's see. Look at the nice creamy mango. Wow. Very beautiful. Lovely. And now she's going to garnish it a little bit with saffron. So nice. Lovely. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all right. Do you know that saffron is more expensive than gold? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I did not know that. And it's right. made from the petals, uh, from the the actual um, the things that come out of the flower. What's that called? It's right in the middle. Yeah, if it's a hibiscus flower that it comes out of. I don't really know. I think saffron flower is saffron flower. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's called the stamen of the flower. That's right. Yeah, and it's more expensive than gold. Actually, I didn't know that. A girlfriend mm. of mine brought me just one little one when she was visiting a country where they grow them themselves. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Today, we're going to be showing you basic knife skills. I've got two little helpers in the kitchen who are going to be following some of my instructions. You can follow these instructions at home with your children, if your parents, for safety issues. So let's begin. This is a knife. The knife has a blade and it has a handle. We don't touch the blade. We only touch the handle. And we hold the handle like this. Yes? Good. If we're, if we're walking with the knife in the kitchen, we hold the knife down. If we're passing the knife to someone else, we pass it with the handle, yeah? Now, what I'm going to show you is with your chopping hand, this is the tip of the knife and that is the heel. And so you go from tip down like that with a, with a special chef's knife, this is a chef's knife, or if you have a knife like this, you cut like this with this hand. With the other hand, you hold your hand like a crab, so, Auntie Joyce, can you interpret for them what this, what I mean to hold their hand like a crab? So we're going to show them with the carrot. You hold your hand like a crab so that if the knife slips, it goes on your nails. Would you like to interpret for them so they know? That's right. Okay. So, du musst die Röbli so nehmen, mit dem Messer so schneiden, dass wenn das Neben deine Finger kommt, dann geht das nicht da rein, sondern das geht gerade runter. Das schützt deine Finger. Verstehst du, was ich meine? Gut. So, did you understand? Always hold the vegetable in a certain way. There's another way you can hold it, and it's called a bridge, where you hold it like this and then you slice through. So, so that's the other way to hold it. Mm -hmm. Would you like to demonstrate to them, Auntie Joyce? Right. When the watch, manchmal wenn du watch so, du kannst so schneiden oder kannst so heben und so schneiden. Okay. We're going to show you. I'm going to use this knife to show you how to chop a carrot, carrot julienne. The chopping technique is called julienne. And chefs like to use it. This is a very small carrot, but you cut off all the edges. It'd be a much bigger carrot, like this. And then to chop julienne is a bit like matchsticks, and you chop it like this for a stir fry. Yeah? We're not going to use carrots because they're difficult to chop, but we're going to start with cucumbers. Yeah, so I'm going to give you a cucumber, a bit of cucumber each, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to cut the cucumber up into bits, and I'm going to give one bit to Lucas, 
in one bit to earlier. And I'm going to show you how to do it with this knife. Yeah, so the cucumber, it rolls around. We don't want it to roll around. So we chop it into half like this. Yeah, and then put it flat. Okay, mash to get ugly, basic. Yeah, so you can use the bridge or you can, that's it. Yeah, I can also. Grab other. Great. Good. And then we're going to hold it like this and we're going to chop it into slices like this. We try to make our slices as equal as possible because, guess what, we want them to look pretty together. Yeah? So... Try it. So we have And then you can chop it again so that they're a little bit smaller. And we can put it on our plates. This is good, this one. So you can chop it so it's a little bit smaller, Lucas, into half again. And then you can put it onto your plate. Yeah. Now, cutting up vegetables like this makes them very easy to eat. So, oops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no English. So, I saw my body finger so heavy and the so shida. Okay, now. So, excellent. Cucumber makes a wonderful vegetable for dips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to focus when you're learning to chop because. At this no, stage, you can turn it so it's like that, and then it yes. doesn't slip as much. So, no, 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 no. That's it. So, whatever. Yeah, I will. A little bit So, these are cucumbers. They're doing a good job. And Lucas is concentrating very hard. Yeah, to make the finish, so heba, by the finger, so night, so yeah, well, doing a very good job earlier. Good. If you have friends round or you have a party, then they can have cucumber with dips, can't they, Auntie Joyce? That's right. We just made the dip, so we will use it for it. That's a very good idea. Good. Excellent. Well, the next thing we're going to show you how to do is sweet peppers. So I'm going to give you a sweet pepper each. So we're going to wait for Eliane to finish. Good. And if you give that to Lucas, then you have the orange one. Now with peppers, you kind of want to do the same thing. But what you do is you put them down like this and you cut the top part off like that. Did you see me? If you do that, excellent. Mm -hmm. And then you want to take the stalk out, so you pull the stalk out and you throw it away. So we don't need that, do we? Excellent. And then we chop off the bottom like this. It's very pretty inside a pepper, isn't it? And then we're going to cut the pepper like that and open it up. We can use our knives to open it up if we like, to cut off the seeds inside, because we don't want the inside part. We're gonna throw it away. Yeah? You can open it up to the side and use your knife. That's it. That's it, to cut it out. That's right. And if you have any left, you can cut out the little bits in it like there, if you cut that little bit there. Can you do that? Mm. Mm -hmm. If you cut away from yourself, it's better. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So, weg for the ear, yeah. Excellent. 
And then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make strips for our dips as, again. We're going to try to make them equal in size. There's a big needle. And you can see they're not very difficult to chop, are they? This will make them lovely finger food for the dips that you made earlier. Good, good, earlier. Now when we're chopping, we don't want too many things on the chopping board because if you have lots of things on the chopping board, you might be trying to avoid something on the chopping board and end up cutting yourself. So we don't want that. Now you ideally you want your knife and your chopping board to be dry. Ours have got a bit wet, but we're gonna continue chopping because they're not too wet. If you take the top and you do the same thing, we just chop them like this. And then you turn it and you chop it again. And you turn it and you chop it again. Excellent. Go on, Elian. Brilliant. And then we have another colour, which is the pepper. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just cut straight across. Mm -hmm. It might be a bit slippery, so be careful. And then we'll put that into the plate as well. Good. Mm -hmm. How are we getting on, Auntie Joyce? She's doing very well. Excellent. I think it's very important that the boys know how to cook, huh? Yeah. And to cut vegetables. So when they grow up, they can cook their own food or even help mum or dad in the kitchen. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is tomatoes. So we're going to wait a little bit for... So, we're going to do a bridge. So shall we do a bridge? And we'll cut the tomato. Then, because the tomato has a round, rocky side, we want to turn it to the flat side so it doesn't rock. And then we're going to use the bridge and we're just going to chop it into three. If you've got a small tomato, if you have a bigger tomato, you can chop it into four. And then we'll chop it into three again, like this, very slowly. And slung some on the eggs. That's one way to chop a tomato. Mm -hmm. So if you do another chop across here, yes, another slice. No, 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 no. A slice along here with the knife. Noch eine Schneider. Länglich. Also. So, Schneider. Zweimal noch. Ja. Und dann? Yeah, and then you turn it. Oops, you can do a little one. Yeah. And you turn it. Sehr gut. Yeah, and you can take one bit like this if it's too big and you can chop it, okay? Mm -hmm. So you chop it like that so that it's all equal. Excellent. And see if we can fit that onto your plate. Can we have it? No. So have it? Yeah. So have it and so have I wonder if we should try a courgette, Auntie Joyce. Do you think we should get them to mm -hmm. try a courgette? This is a courgette. It's a yellow courgette. You get green courgettes, but this one is a yellow one. So once we've put our tomatoes away and wiped our boards, if we've still got our paper. Okay, so I'm going to cut the courgette into three bits. I'm going to pass one down to Lucas. One for Elian. And I'm going to show you, I've got one that looks a bit like a bell. So it's not exactly the same. But if you do the same bridge and slice it into half. Excellent. And you turn it down so it's flat. And you can use the bridge again and slice it into half. 
then you can do one more slice if you like and you can do another slice with the bridge look I'm doing one not to my mouth two good good and then do another slice no, there so. so you go like this yeah okay and you use your fingers careful with your fingers and then you slice every one of nice. them into half yeah so we just go half And so we've now got a yellow courgette all sliced up, very pretty. And I don't think we really have enough space on our plates anymore. Excellent. And these are known as crudités, where you dip them into dips. Excellent. Now, what we could do is mushrooms as well. Shall we mm -hmm. do some mushrooms with them? Let's put our courgettes on our plate. Um, lots of children don't like mushrooms, but they are full of protein and they can be quite tasty. Thank you very much. So you can slice them in the very same way. No. So have that. And so we've got four slices there, like this, yeah, there you go, that's it, good. The final chopping method we're going to show is chiffonade, it's the French way to say that you're going to roll something up and then because it's so leafy it could be a cabbage or, le or basil leaves even, and you're just going to chop it up. Equal slices are important, so just so that it appears to be equal and attractive. Brilliant. And then we have the chiffonade lettuce. We're going to pile it right at the top. That's like a lettuce, a vegetable man with all this lettuce. And Auntie Joyce is going to quickly show us how to do chiffonade with basil. Right. Okay. Here we go. We will put one leaf on top of the other. Roll it up like a cigar. And cut it now in strips. Very good, Eliam. Very good. Very fine. Gums, gums, feel. Because herbs have very strong flavors, so we only need a little amount to add flavor to a dish. And there you go. That's cutting in strips. Excellent. So that's all we have to learn about basic knife skills for this session. I hope you work at home with your parents to try out some of these knife skills. Thank you and bye-bye. Can we say goodbye? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> Table settings create a special atmosphere for the eating environment. This particular setting is a blend of colors which is stimulating to the eye. In fact, it mirrors the theme of engaging children with cooking. As you can see, we have our children here and the display here represents the work that they were engaged in today when they learnt about the value of vegetables, how to make it exciting and attractive. The recipes you can see were from their own hands, creative hands, and I'm going to invite Angelette to just share with us what they have created and how beneficial it was in terms of learning for nutrition. Well, they've created a number of different vegetable platters. And as you can see, there are lots of different vegetables. There's broccoli, there's cauliflower, radishes, courgettes and carrots, 
all very beneficial for different reasons. There's also wonderful dips that they've created, such as avocado guacamole. They did um, ginger and tomato dip. Um, they did peanut sauce. They did Joyce's mayonnaise. So they did a wonderful blend of sauces and dips. But just to say some of the benefits of the, the plant chemicals, a plant chemical is something very small that's naturally inside of the plant. For example, broccoli, this is a broccoli, it contains something uh, called um, indole 3 carbonyl, which is a long word but can easily be said, that is very good to help the liver cleanse the blood. Now, children might not know why that's important, but it's important because of all the car fumes and environmental pollution that is around. Then we have things like carrots. Children often eat light carrots, especially carrot sticks, and they're very easy to eat, but they contain beta carotene, so when they're make, doing lots of things full of energy, they have the carrot, the carotene to protect them. And then we have, what have we, else have we got? We've got tomatoes that are very enjoyable, and we have the avocado that's good for the skin. Good. So you can see that with an array like this, it makes eating interesting. The children can learn about the vegetables. And as you can see from their faces, each of them are painted to represent one of the berries or fruits that they were involved in making the dishes today. Now, Joyce, earlier on, we learned about bread making and we had a huge sample of different bread dishes and recipes which the children made some and the young and the teenagers. Can you just tell us a little bit about the bread bowl there? Well, let me get up and show you how one can, with different kinds of bread, serve a meal in the evening when you have a lot of guests. All the wonderful breads that we have made have been cut into small pieces and we put the dip, one of the dips, in the middle so that guests can come and put a little bit on a piece of bread and enjoy these wonderful flavors of different breads. And you can serve with this a cup of tea, a herbal tea goes very well with it, or a lovely fruit juice. Mm. Good. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned on the table is the bean sprouts. And I know that Joyce was very um, happy to have sprouted those beans so that we could talk about them. Now, the difference between normal beans and sprouted beans is that sprouted beans actually are easier to digest. So some children and adults have problems when they eat beans, they have flatulence. When you sprout the beans, it reduces the flatulence because the enzymes that help with the sprouting help to break down the um, fiber inside the beans to make them easier to digest. Also, the protein content increases and the vitamin content increases with sprouting. So it's excellent, easy to digest without any of the undesirable consequences of eating beans. Right, and of course, as we finish off our meal with these other foods, this will be an eating experience that we will cherish. Let's enjoy the eating experience today. Joyce, do you want to demonstrate how to do a vegetable fondue? Right, we have cut into bite sizes. Mm -hmm. We dip the vegetables mm -hmm. of our preference into the vegetable broth. I'll put a few of these mushrooms in there, some courgettes in there of different sizes, and I will put a few cauliflower in there. And then, here's the little basket that we are going to dip in and take the vegetable out. We put it on our plate. There we go. I prepared the broth with lots of garlic, ginger, and fresh herbs. So that when you dip the vegetables in there, it just gives those vegetables a wonderful, wonderful flavor. And all these different dips that we have made, for instance, this is a peanut dip. Here we have made the bean tartar, 
Here we have the ginger dip with cashews and let me try it. Avocado. Dip it in there and mm. nice. Okay, so while Joyce is finishing up, maybe we can all try and put a few of the vegetables that we need or would like to eat inside the broth. Very carefully. And then try taking them out. Do you want to choose some? Put what you want in. Dip it into here, then you take it out. And this concludes a wonderful journey in better health and helping children learn more about vegetables and the benefits of vegetables and fruits in the diet. Enjoy your meal. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to tasting this and it's going to be an experience I will remember. And what an appetite.